lately, a ton of video game iceberg explanation videos have been popping up all over the place on YouTube, and I knew that it was only a matter of time that an iceberg based around the Mother Trilogy would eventually pop up somewhere on the internet. So I took it amongst myself to explore this block of ice, and see what secrets lie down below. For those of you that don't have any idea what an iceberg is, it's basically a bunch of theories based around a game or movie plays into an iceberg layering sort of format, similar to those surface web, deep web iceberg pictures you've probably seen somewhere before. The theories are placed from the most known and least obscure to sometimes the craziest tinfoil hat shit that you've never believed a human could put so much effort into making up. And with Mother's cool leg fan base, I won't be surprised if I run into something crazy. world of Earthbound, there's an entity that lurks in the shadows that goes by the name of Gygus. Ness is introduced to said Gygus in the first 15 minutes of the game, and even though Ness doesn't encounter him, as a player, you can feel and see the evil and odd almost essence as you wander throughout the world, as shown by the enemies you begin to face. At the end of the game, Ness and crew are forced to go back in time to defeat Gygus and prevent his evil ways from ever being felt. Reaching Gygus, you travel up what seems to be an internal organ looking pathway up to us what some people would describe to be a uterus, which is a machine the game calls the Devil Machine. Ness's frenemy Porky is also there, and they duke it out until Porky takes an L and unleashes Gygus on the party. Fighting Gygus, people notice that in one of Gygus' later phases, it looks like the pattern outlines of Gygus makes out what seems to be a baby in the womb. According to the theory, by going back in time to defeat Gygus, you're essentially doing an abortion to get him at his weak point in life, a fetus. And the uterus, being called the devil machine, would make sense due to it being the machine that birthed the evil incarnate himself. However, this theory was debunked by the game creator himself, saying that Gygus was in fact inspired by the dream that he had, and involved him walking to the wrong movie at a theater and witnessing a scene that scarred him for life. At the end of Earthbound, as the credits roll, you are shown a slideshow of all the photos taken by the photo man. One of these pictures is of Ness and the gang posing for the flick. The character Sans from Undertale is a secret hidden room the player can find that has a drawer that contains a badge that many have claimed is the Franklin badge, and a photo album of, and I quote, people that you don't recognize. More evidence supporting this theory is the fact that Undertale's game developer Toby Fox had made an Earthbound mod prior to making the Undertale game that continued the story of the scientist Dr. Ann Donuts and his sentence of madness after sending his child along with his friends to their own death with this time machine. And this was enough coincidence for the fan bases to run rampant. One of the many friends Ness meets along the adventure goes by the name of Tony, and according to the game creator, Tony here is gay. Confirmed. In Mother 3, a character named Thomas takes the doorknob off of Flint's door. This then becomes a reoccurring joke from the beginning all the way to the end of the game, with the characters bringing it up and mentioning strange encounters and events while in possession or proximity of the doorknob. Like many games that come from the vast overseas, they must go through a process of localization changes to remove jokes or references that other audiences wouldn't understand, but we usually just call that shit censorship and the Mother Trilogy was not spirit of said censorship. A handful of changes were made to the games. To pick a few, there were graphical changes to billboards and ads, and religious references were also removed to keep people from getting all upset. And of course, shitty translations. The bane of watching free anime on the interwebs. There lingers a cult in the outskirts of Auden that goes by the name of Happy Happyism, with their main mission consisting of painting the entire town the color blue. Everything seems harmless at first until you start to look at things a little bit closer. Time for a minor history lesson. In 1984, Shoko Asahara found a cult named Onshinrikyo in Japan. 
Asahara was an acupuncturist that claimed to have the ability to levitate from practicing a form of meditation. The cult had many forms of recruitment strategies such as television, music, books, and even their very own anime series. Om Shinrikyo was noted to have hosted many political driven parades that consisted of happy gatherings with displays and marches of people singing and dancing. To really get the good graces of the people, they even passed out balloons to the children. Although Asahara's teachings were very different than the public image he made, he often preached about the end time prophecies, talked about nuclear war, and that he was a prophet that would eventually come to break peace, and only those that joined his cause would be offered salvation. Eventually, Aum Shinrikyo gathered enough of following to run for parliament. And of course, they didn't win. With that inhuman act, Japan was plunged into a state of insecurity not experienced for decades. A terrorist attack using the deadly nerve gas sarin was used against the common folk, killing eight people and harming 200 others. Yet, another terrorist attack, using the same sarin nerve agency, this time killing 12 people and injuring over 5,000. Who were the masterminds that planned these attacks against the public? None other than the cult Om Shinrikyo. Now, what does any of this have to do with Earthbound? Well, to put it bluntly, the Om Shinrikyo cult's headquarters was apparently located near Dairy Compound. And, coincidentally, the Colts and Earthbound just so happens to have a cow. That's the color blue, right next to their base of operations. Now, if that wasn't enough, they also share similar cultist attire. The Pig Masks are a militaristic led group run by their dictator Porky that wished to bring modernization to the Nowhere Islands. They are first encountered breaking into Osoe Castle by Duster and West. The connection between the pig masks in America could be related to pig masks' use of brute force and deadly weapons and their overall conquering appearance throughout the game, with the excuse to bring modern rule under pork. Very similar to the westernization that took place in Japan after the events of the Big Boom. Basically, Flint has the same badge as Ness from the last game, so they're basically related now. There is a fight in the game where Ness is to face off against four police officers and a police captain, similar to the events in which activist Rodney King was being down by police after a drunk driving incident. First game of the Mother series is awfully similar to the second, or rather the other way around. Earthbound is a polished Mother Zero due to limited capabilities due to the hardware of the NES. Although the two game stories may seem to be the same with minor differences, many speculate that they're actually parallel worlds due to things like Kig being alternate Gygus and Nintendo being all Ness. Or they can all take place at the same time, with the first game, Mother Zero, taking place in the past, and Earthbound actually being the sequel to the game. The design of the Starman was inspired by the description of an alien due to an encounter witnessed by a Brazilian bus driver in September 1977. Not much is documented about this encounter, so this is all for now. This one is simple. Nintendo just either doesn't want to do it, or they're saving up for the right hype moment to drop it. This one here could possibly hold some truths. Considering throughout the entire game, you never have any physical contact with this man. You do talk to him over the course of the game on the cell phone. Could it be that Ness's father was turned into a cell phone by some sort of weird, unexplained science experiment by Dr. Andonuts? Or is it that Ness's mom likes to play with phone? In the final moments of Mother 3, the masked man is revealed to be Klaus, Lucas's brother, and he dies shortly after their battle, now joining their mother. Lucas then pulls the last needle, keeping the dragon sealed, and the entire world basically ends. Then the dragon's ability of rebirth then commences upon the destroyed world, 
erasing all the Porky's evilness and restoring peace and prosperity back to the world, similar to many predictions and stories of real life about a sort of rebirth of the world, whether that be symbolic or literal, who knows. After the end credits are finished, Klaus is seen leaving Porky's side as the masked man and returning to his rival place with his family and heading off into the new world together, leaving behind a fresh new logo. Following an origins easter egg ending, many speculate that due to the wacky sort of world of scenario that Ness and his friends go on, and considering that they're still kids, this could explain all the strange inanimate objects and monsters as enemies, and the weird people and towns you visit throughout the game could just all be part of one giant's kids game, and their crazy imagination. Seeing how the Mother series takes inspiration from real life myths, hence Bigfoot and the Nessie, so the thought that the alien abduction that takes place in the first minutes of gameplay could possibly take inspiration from a real life alien encounter, or even abduction. Hell, even the star map were influenced by an alien encounter, so this might not even be a stretch. Heaven's Gate was a suicidal apocalyptic cult formed in the 90s. Kind of similar to the Amshin Ryukyo cult in a way, but instead this cult hit headlines with a large amount of cult members, including cult leaders Marshall Applewhite and Bonnie Nettles committed ritualistic suicide in order to board a ship in which they believed would save them from the coming apocalypse and bring them to paradise. The parallel between Earthbound and our suicide boys here is that the original settlers of Nowhere Island arrived on a ship that they called the White Ship, in which they used to escape the destruction of their original lands. And taking into consideration that the Happy Happy is in cult and the game is based on another cult, this is likely very true. Well, he was the antagonist, and considering he was born from the Devil Machine, and his evil influence corrupted Porky, we'll leave this in the air for now. There's a sequence in Earthbound involving one of the party members moves eerie training right before the final fight with Gygus. He sits atop a mountain and begins to meditate. A face then appears in the sky proclaiming to be the spirit of his ancient lineage and proceeds to set for the trial. He then breaks his legs, tears off his arms, cuts off his ears, and lastly, gouges out his eyeballs, leaving Mu in a dark silent potato-like state, which seems to be based on a real-life by extreme meditation practices by Zen Buddhist monks. Lucas and Bonnie end up falling out of the big mess ship and Lucas ends up landing in a field of sunflowers and seeing the ghost of his mother whom he ends up chasing to the end of the field until he falls into a pile of hay. The field of sunflowers could be symbolic for the afterlife which would make sense due to the fact that he literally just fell off an airship and also could explain to his why he's seen his mother and the falling into hay could be another form of symbolism for him returning back to the real world. For those that don't know, the Miyazaki wrote many popular Studio Ghibli films like Spirited Away and Ponyo, but the theory claims that since the entire story of Mother 3 and the story structure itself are very different than the first two games, and they feature a few references and nods to Studio Ghibli films, taking into heavy consideration that the creator of Earthbound, Itoi, and Miyazaki know each other, this leads me to speculate that Itoi could have worked alongside Miyazaki to come up with the story that we have as Mother 3, or Miyazaki could have wrote the story entirely himself. Youngtown 666 is based on a YouTube video uploaded back in 2008. The video claims that you could find 666 written in the grass near Youngtown. Very similar to the old Call of Duty myths like the Chicken Lady videos in the Modern Warfare series. Hardcore anime fans that played Mother 3 picked up on a handful of subtle references to Neon Genesis Evangelion. The theme song from the Majipsies is awfully similar to a very iconic song that plays during the end of the world and the end of Evangelion. And in Mother 3, after the last needle is pulled, the dragon is released and destroys everything in order to reset Earth to its natural balance. This shares a familiar theme with the end of Evangelion when everyone dies and the human race enters the next phase of evolution. As mentioned before, the NPCs living in the world of Mother are rather strange. Whether they tell you something completely irrelevant to the story, or when they break the fourth wall, which is very frequent. Could it be possible that the NPCs in fact are actually sentient beings similar to the Seaman in the Seaman Dreamcast game?
In the boss fight with Porky and Mother 3, uses an attack and a text box appears stating, What did Porky do? And then you are hit with damage and a status effect. So, what did Porky do? The thoughts are endless. Some things were never meant to be known. Fragbot stories is one of them.